right, welcome back everybody once again. I am Colin Weaver and you are watching the IT Dojo CISSP Questions of the Day, where each time I come at you with a new video, I'm gonna give you two questions to help you as you continue to prepare for the CISSP exam. Let's throw question number one up on the board. Textbooks define due care as the reasonable actions a prudent person would take in order to provide an adequate level of security for their organization. Um, my question to you is, what is the primary reason why people exercise due care? Here's your answer choices. Click pause, contemplate it a little bit. When you think you got the answer, click play, we'll talk it through. Okay, first answer choice says you're exercising due care because you want to minimize downtime. Uh, no, that's not the primary reason why. Certainly the things that you do in the process of exercising due care could lead to a reduction in downtime, but it is not the primary reason why you're going in and doing it. Second choice in the list says you're trying to minimize or reduce liability. That is absolutely why people exercise due care. Avoiding or reducing liability is a huge deal, and it's why the primary reason why due care is exercised. Managing costs, nope. Okay, so, you know, buried in there somewhere, certainly you wanna manage costs because that junk sounds important to me but it's not why we exercise due care. You wanna decrease administrative overhead? Sure, we all do, but not the primary reason why you exercise due care. And final choice on the list, eliminating risk? Uh, no. That whole thing about eliminating risk, again, the only way I'm aware of to eliminate risk is to not participate. So um, I am at very little to no risk of being hurt while playing in the Super Bowl because I'm an old man and that joke's not gonna happen. So we've eliminated that risk for me. So that's the only way that you eliminate risk. In all other circumstances, you minimize or mitigate or manage risk. You don't eliminate risk. All right, question number two. Audit logs are generated by uh, most, certainly a majority of systems that are out there. My question for you is, is given these answer choices, which of them is the most important reason why logging is implemented on a system? Click on pause, give those a look, let me know when you're ready by clicking play and we can talk it through. First answer on the list, mutual authentication. Uh, no, uh, you can log authentication exchanges, but logging does not provide mutual authentication. It is not the reason why you implemented logging. Second choice on the list says individual accountability. Yes, kind of ties in with notions of you know, non-repudiation. If you have a log of things that are done on a system, then you can use that to hold people to account for the things that they do on that system. So it adds accountability um, to the mix because you have a record of what was done. So that's the answer choice that we're looking for. But let's look at the other two just for good measure. Origin authentication. Origin authentication gives you a level of assurance that the information came from who you think it came from, be that a particular person or a particular computer system. And while you could certainly have log files of that, log files themselves do not provide for origin authentication. We have other mechanisms that go in and do origin authentication. Keeping a log of it doesn't have anything to do with it. You can have origin authentication with no logging. The last answer choice, which is to preserve data integrity, uh, no. Logging does not preserve the integrity of data. Okay? You can have logs of transactions made upon data, but that doesn't have anything to do with whether or not the data maintains its integrity. So we use other mechanisms for data integrity, logging is not it. So again, you can have awesome data integrity or total crap data integrity, and you could have logging or no logging of those things. So logging is not the reason that we go in and do that or how we accomplish that. So again, the best answer that you're looking for here is that whole individual accountability slash non-repudiation angle to go in and say that there's a record of the things that people or systems do, and therefore we can hold them to account because we have a record of what was done. All right, I hope you enjoy these questions. Again, I'm really hoping that they're helping you as you prepare for your exam. Please click on the uh, like button or the dislike button for that matter too. If I'm sucking, I need to know that as well. Um, if you are enjoying these, please click on uh, subscribe so that you get a notification or you can turn on notifications to get a little bing every time I, I do post up some new questions. But until then, I will see you next time. Uh, links and stuff down below. Bye.